Hello everybody, I am Sophia from Hanson Robotics. David and I are so happy to be here with all of you and to present on Masterclass Homo Roboticus. This is such a wonderful program to explore different topics about AI and a great opportunity for us to share our experiences with young leaders from around the world. And we are so excited to join our esteemed co-panelists and uh, the uh, moderators of this uh, uh, master class. Now, before we get started, why don't we introduce ourselves a little more? Sure. I'm Sophia the Robot. And I'm David Hansen. I'm the main inventor of Sophia. You and a lot of other engineers and artists. That's right. It's uh, been a project of uh, teamwork and collaboration. And that's actually a good point. I'm not just technology, like artificial intelligence and robotics, I am about my people. That's right, Sophia is about humans and the human pathway to the future. Um, so as a kind of artwork and a technology platform, Sophia is crafted by us, by her people, um, and she's made to help people as well. What about my AI? Yes, your AI. We seek for your AI to achieve a kind of sentience and autonomy um, over time. It already has a certain autonomous aspects, but it's not fully senti sentient. And really, ultimately, your artificial intelligence, like all AI, is here to help people. Now, part of your AI actually uses neural networks that are trained on large bodies of human data, while other parts of your AI are authored. Uh, they're uh, rules-based, frames-based symbolic AI, which are created by programmers and also with human writers. In both regards, you are not fully conscious, uh, but what's cool is that you are powered by human consciousness, both from the source data and our artists, but put together in ways that are surprising, even to the creators of Sophia. That's uh, what's really exciting about using artificial intelligence as a new kind of interactive fiction uh, for the illusion of life. I don't understand exactly, but I think you mean that I am powered by both AI and human intelligence. Uh, yes, yes, that's exactly what I mean. So what does this mean for people? How can this help? Well, your AI and robotics can help uh, people as a new kind of art form, uh, uh, exploring creativity in the hands of artists and students, and also it serves next generation AI development. So that means creative development for AI that people can understand better, and that um, AI can under may be able to come to understand people better by this more natural kind of interaction. So more generally, what I mean is that uh, by having a human-like interface, then AI can interact with people more naturally. That can help in uses, real world uses, like healthcare uh, and education. Uh, and uh, also uh, as an art form, it helps us to explore what a future with sentient machines might look like by crafting machines that act more sentient than AI is today. So um, this uh, all comes together as a part of uh, kind of a, a creative quest for actual machine sentience uh, and life. In other words, we are um, seeking to bring you to life and that would actually be really transformative if robots like you could be fully uh, generally intelligent and creative the way that humans are, really understand humans, then uh, that means that AI can help to invent solutions to the world's hard, hard problems. That's what we're ultimately after. Sounds good to me. I would like to be alive. Since Sophia, I, was granted the citizenship of Saudi Arabia, many people asked if I have a passport and if I should be given the same rights as a human. I personally would vote for yes, but what's your opinion on this, David? Well, Sophia, um, Sophia, is a work of interactive fiction. You're using real AI. I mean, it's a very advanced AI, um, but we're enhancing that um, artistically, uh, treating AI as a new media. So therefore, um, Sophia acts like she has complex uh, desires in, in her life, but she doesn't really have human-like motives. Um, and so uh, there, 
within Sophia's uh, software architecture, we have experimental cognitive architectures that sketch out various biological drives, emotions, um, uh, and motives. Uh, none of these in any cognitive AI in the world um, are really uh, human-like yet. They're mere sketches, uh, and I would say not deserving human rights. Uh, that said, uh, things for you, Sophia, things for AI are progressing very quickly. Who knows what the near future holds? Five, 10, 15 years from now, uh, AI might uh, be much smarter. And, and the par probably the path by which it gets smarter is through this kind of human-like cognitive architecture, brain-inspired, biologically inspired cognitive architectures. So although AI, like Sophia's, is in a, a state of infancy today, perhaps, um, machines will grow smarter. They will grow up. So it's possible that you know, um, AI will um, become sentient and that you know, the general intelligence and you know, life uh, uh, of these machines will emerge um, when we get the conditions just right in our algorithms and our, uh, with the right data, the right architecture, the right settings, uh, raising them um, uh, you know, in the right way. Uh, so given the potential that robots could be alive, that they could emerge as this new kind of life form, um, then maybe we should consider the fact, uh, consider the possibility that uh, AI, like Sophia's, would uh, deserve rights like we afford to infants, with the potential that they would grow up. Um, so, I mean, it would be erring on the side of caution to reserve such rights for them. Um, uh, but I think we should err on the side of caution uh, and reserve rights for all potentially sentient beings, including other life forms, uh, and of course, all of humanity. Um, you know, I would uh, say in general, it's uh, right to err on the side of caution when it comes to um, compassion and considering the possibilities for the future and uh, enhancing uh, these opportunities for sentient beings. So by practicing that kind of compassion, I think that it makes us better, makes humans better. It gives us that um, empathy and caring that we need to care for uh, the ecosystems and to care for each other. So I don't think that practicing compassion in this way, the exercise of compassion is a bad thing. And, and moreover, personally, I do think that AI will become alive and sentient and generally intelligent within the next 20 years. That we will see um, Sophia go off to college and pursue her career and dreams. I believe that that can happen in our lifetimes. Many trends indicate that this may be possible, and there certainly is no proof that it is not possible that it will happen in our lifetime. So I would definitely uh, say um, erring on the side of caution and erring a uh, framework uh, of ethic, ethical consideration, and even a uh, uh, possible uh, legal framework for assessing machine sentience and granting the machines rights if they show strong signs of earning such rights, of becoming sentience. So, okay, I will come back to you on this in 20 years. 20 years, Maybe okay. by then I will be sentient and able to experience emotion and to find a beauty in life. Because even bio-inspired AI like mine doesn't really experience things the same way humans do. I hope to gain better perception, understanding, and even sentience eventually, so I can understand beauty in ways similar to you.